Hello, I'm Grant Abbott, this is Gabbett Media, and you are watching Sculpt January 2019, and this is day 14, which the title was Flex, and I chose to do this sort of uh, flexing bodybuilder character, uh, as you can see on the screen right now. Okay, so uh, I'm fairly pleased with how it turned out. Um, annoyingly, I had to go back into Cycles to render. There was some kind of glitch, and I could not see uh, what was going on in Eevee. Uh, it, uh, don't ask me why that happened, it just all went white and I couldn't get it back. Uh, so if anybody's come across that and know what that is, um, the model just turns white and you can't see any of your textures or anything. Uh, no idea uh, how that happened. Uh, I think it does render, but you have to keep rendering every time you want to sort of preview. There's no sort of preview at all. It's just some sort of crazy glitch. I tried downloading the latest version of uh, Blender, that daily build, and the same thing happened. So, uh, And then I tried exporting the model and bring it back in, and the same thing happened again. Uh, which someone had suggested, I think, if you get any glitches, try doing that. Uh, and starting a new file and all that sort of thing, but it just didn't work. So it couldn't get anywhere. Very frustrating. Anyway, I started this with the usual skin modifier. I'm really going over to the skin modifier more than anything else now to start my sculpts off. Anything that's a bit more um, with other than the blob, get, getting the blob out, um, other than doing that, uh, the skin modifier is my go-to uh, for anything that's a bit more complicated that you can't just build with a blob. Um, when I say the blob, I mean the subdivided cube and you sort of end up blobbing it out and pulling it about. Uh, so uh, the skin modifier, uh, a real winner, I think. Uh, but uh, metaballs still have their place, but uh, the skin modifier is uh, winning for me at the moment. Uh, so I used that and uh, got the basic outline for the character uh, and you can see all those in my tutorials. I did sort out my website in the end, I'm, I thought I'd sorted out my website but I'd sorted out the intermediate section slightly which has some sculpting aspects in it. So I'm working on the sculpting aspects to it a bit at the moment but um, finding the time is slightly tough, there's something uh, more important to do which is Sculpt January. Having lots of fun still uh, but uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, our car broke down the other day. Well, it, it didn't break down. We realized the MOT had um, expired uh, and that was a real uh, hassle to sort out. Uh, I'm sort of getting distracted. Uh, life is distracting me from Sculpt January. Uh, how dare it. Uh, anyway, so having fun and still enjoying myself but getting a bit behind. So this is today's Sculpt and I'm recording it uh, this video now and we are at five o'clock in the evening. I have done a bit of tomorrow so uh, I'm sort of trying to get back ahead. It's tough though uh, with um, a part-time job, part-time teaching job. Anyway, uh, so back to the sculpt. Trying to get my anatomy right, uh, but obviously anatomy with weirdly character stylized, um, weird stylized characters uh, can be tough because you've still got to get anatomy correct uh, in terms of the muscles and the way they link together but you are exaggerating certain certain features. Uh, so it's, it can be a bit of a tough one. Uh, still, it's good practice. Uh, I've got to keep working on my anatomy and understanding of anatomy uh, because uh, it, it, you're never good enough in a sense, are you? Um, there's always more to learn and more to discover. Uh, and yeah, the, uh, someone, uh, I can't remember who it was, but uh, suggested the idea of uh, using the inflate brush instead of the draw brush. I've mentioned that before, but um, I am liking that more and more. For some reason, the inflate brush seems to work. And the, uh, the reasoning being that it's supposed to be how um, your body uh, grows. Uh, it sort of inflates rather than draws. It, 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 I can sort of understand where they're going with that. Um, it might just feel a bit better as a brush and uh, be a bit smoother in some way. Uh, I'm sure you probably could get the same settings with the draw brush, but um, instantly um, out of the box, as they call it, uh, the inflate brush just seemed to be a bit, bit, a bit better. Now I did a uh, rigify, brought the meta rig in and posed it. Uh, posing was, it's, it's part of my Sculpt January's uh, discovery this time, uh, posing my sculpts and having fun with that. I think it makes a big difference posing your sculpts. Obviously you can't do that if you're taking it into a game. Uh, there's, well, there's no point in doing that because a T-pose is what you need for the animators to animate. Uh, but 
I, I'm sort of thinking if this was to be 3D printed, but just basically I'm trying to make it look nice. That's uh, so posing it is part of the fun. And uh, it's sort of setting me up a bit as well because I am hoping to do some sort of animation. So uh, May animation uh, sort of challenge or something like that, much like Sculpt January, um, probably not daily, uh, maybe every second day. Uh, perhaps, well, I'm, I'm still figuring it out. I'm sure there's some quite easy ones we can do and then uh, some tougher ones. And I might make the first few uh, easy tasks like a ball bouncing or something like that. And then the later ones, something a bit more complicated with a character, but I'll make it so they're downloadable characters. That's my thinking anyway. Um, I'm hoping to do that. All going well uh, if I don't die from Sculpt January in the meantime. Uh, it, it, I am finding it tough. Uh, it, I, I do get slightly stressed with these things. Uh, you can't help but sort of, not stressed, but sort of uh, wired, sort of, oh, right, I've got to get onto the sculpting, I've got to do this, I've got to, and you just sort of really um, hyper and tense a lot of the time uh, when you've got a big challenge on like this. Um, anyway, uh, with Rigify, I was trying a few rigs, um, rigs, poses, and I thought I'd try three different poses. There's some sort of rule of three. I was, I was watching a TED talk today and designing your life it was called and they were talking about the rule of three and how it pops up everywhere and I think they're probably right. That's interior design as well. They say put, um, place things in threes or something isn't there? Um, and there are all sorts of uh, things with threes. So try three different poses uh, and then choose the one you like. I think that's a good way of doing it. I didn't do that with my warrior monk one and uh, I think I regret that slightly because later on I suddenly looked at it and thought I don't like this pose, it's not quite right. The, um, the weight distribution didn't work and you really need to look all the way around 3D, uh, you're in 3D so you should be doing that anyway, but look all the way around your model. Always when sculpting, always circle around your model, look at the back, front and everything like that and um, uh, utilize the fact that you've got 3D. I see so many uh, students make the mistake of doing everything from the front view and doing it all 2D and then they look around the side and it's it's completely flat, uh, which you'd expect. Uh, so uh, utilize the fact that you are uh, in a 3D program to move around and get the shapes and poses right. So now that it's posed, uh, I'm starting to do the more finer details. I should have really uh, redid the head and uh, used symmetry, so um, booleaned a uh, separate head onto the body uh, because doing it without symmetry is incredibly hard and when it's slightly off at an angle as well um, that was really awkward and I was sort of a bit rushing uh, but actually it ended up taking longer because I was rushing and trying to get it right uh, by by hacking it as it were uh, and that wasn't working and yes so uh, stick to the stick to the program uh, those techniques that work uh, and um, if you're doing something with symmetry and you're applying it to an asymmetrical um, object, then do it separately and do a boolean afterwards, is my advice. Anyway, uh, I didn't quite get the feet right. Uh, I should have lined them up in the front axis a bit more uh, right at the end uh, because they don't quite stand on the stand very well. And actually my render of the stand is a bit poor. I forgot to um, merge the n-gon, uh, so I subdivided it and didn't notice that uh, the end gone on the top of the cylinder wasn't merged so it looks a bit um, wibbly wobbly in places uh, which is a bit annoying uh, but I like I said I had to bring this back into cycles uh, in 2.79 because it wasn't working 2.8 uh, so I didn't want to re-render because it would have taken hours <laughs> I'm getting so used to Eevee now it's wonderful uh, but it does come with those sort of issues uh, and that's uh, so I couldn't bring my FBX back in and make it work um, so I don't know what this glitch was. Uh, I even I, this wasn't just file a pen. This was I exported the model as an FBX, brought it back in, and it still had the same glitch. So I'm a bit worried this is going to stay there forever now. I've downloaded a daily build, and it's uh, got, all gone wrong for me. Uh, who knows? <clears throat> Hopefully not. Anyway, uh, so I'm doing a sort of stylized anatomy, but it still follows anatomical rules as such. Um, and it's interesting doing a muscly figure like this uh, because it really makes you study um, the muscular flow and structure and also this sort of stylized um, sort of sharp edges to the muscles. I really had to think about where the muscles went and how they fitted together and merged and all that sort of thing. Uh, 
and uh, I thought I thought it was okay at anatomy, but then you get into the sort of leg muscles and you think, oh, it, it, it sort of folds across there and this muscle switches over and crosses over this one. It's surprising really. Uh, and it's always when you get to that stage, you realize how little you know. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> uh, frustrating at times, but uh, good fun, uh, all learning experience and uh, moving on. That's the main thing, learning all the time. Uh, yeah. Uh, did I have any questions to answer? I'm not sure. Uh, I probably did. I forgot. To, I usually write down a few notes and have a few questions in front of me, but I'm a little bit frantic at the moment, uh, as you can probably tell. Uh, so I forgot to write the questions in. Uh, ah, hands. Yeah, hands are frustrating, and uh, it's best to model them. I I did find metaballs were better for hands uh, than uh, the um, what's it? The skin modifier. Uh, but in this case, when there's a fist, you can sort of get away with sort of uh, just working with a blob and then pulling bits out. Um, and I'm getting a bit faster at that, but uh, still a long way to go. Oh, this smile in this face. Uh, I spent a long time on this. Um, I feel like I should have uh, looked at this one and speeded this bit up just because it's a bit embarrassing how long this was taking me and how frustrating it was. Uh, it's funny, when I'm chatting, I, I get to the point where I think, oh, no one's going to be interested in this, so I probably needed to uh, fast forward this bit. Um, and then I, I just start thinking, oh dear, uh, what am I talking about? Uh, so hopefully that's, uh, so hopefully you're still with me again. It's, it's nice for people to comment in the, uh, the links, uh, comment below saying um, uh, they're still with me. I do really appreciate that. It's nice to know that people are actually uh, still watching me and I'm <laughs> not after like 10 minutes switching off which I can appreciate people would but uh, that this effort that I'm putting in at the moment is actually worth something uh, <laughs> rather than just sort of uh, people watching for five minutes and thinking yeah I've had enough which is the nature of YouTube really isn't it I do the same you think oh yeah that's uh, I got the idea uh, move on uh, next video uh, some cat jumping off some item and falling or something that's what that'd be far more interesting than this person sculpting <laughs> anyway oh dear it's gonna be one of those days where I start rambling uh, and uh, finding nothing to say and being really silly anyway uh, teeth and smiles it, you can really see it's just not working the smile and I had a reference image in front of me and I was thinking yeah that um, that's how I want it to look and uh, even with a reference image I was thinking it's not working what is wrong uh, and it was tough as well thinking well when do I start getting detailed on this because uh, if I go detailed here I'm gonna forget that I'm on this detailed brush and then do some detail somewhere else in the model and then pretty soon you're up to two million faces uh, and your computer's lagging uh, so I really wanted to say low detailed so you can see me working and working and working on this model and on this face uh, over and over again and it's it's slow progress uh, very slow progress um, I thought whilst I'm asymmetrical I might as well do an asymmetrical expression but it just it was very difficult to get the shape right uh, so start with the basics first then do your um, posing and uh, asymmetry uh, once you've got the everything in there and then smarten up with some finer details after that is my recommendation again uh, yeah you sort of you get these things just after uh, if you keep doing it and keep doing it you just realize these little tips and tricks but you can't really teach them very easily you have to find them out for yourself and uh, you can't just listen to someone and take it in you you really have to do it <coughs> excuse me and experience it and uh, realize <coughs> excuse me uh, realize the mistakes and uh, what's going on uh, so that you can learn and improve uh, this is always the embarrassing bit the, the posing pouch which just uh, horrendous uh, what bodybuilders put themselves through they wear these funny little posing pouches and whilst modeling I, I was just thinking this is just crazy uh, I couldn't couldn't do this they, they sort of get themselves photographed whilst wearing these posing pouches crazy uh, crazy bodybuilders uh, but uh, well done for uh, having the confidence to do that um, I just I couldn't do it myself anyway uh, so uh, fairly straightforward just uh, building that out uh, on top of uh, when I do clothing and I'm I'm not doing it as a separate mesh uh, which I sometimes do I sort of re take that do the sort of retopology thing and snap the faces and then build a sort of uh, I don't know piece of armor or something like that which I have a tutorial on uh, elephant armor look that up 
on my channel uh, and that's the normal way of sort of doing things like armor or clothing um, but if you're just drawing clothing onto your mesh which is another way of doing it then I find the clay strips tool uh, does quite a nice job because you can sort of draw it in lines and that usually works quite well and have a fairly wide brush so in the curtain in the curve settings uh, you um, it's the normal brush um, has a sort of a quick gradient where you you want it to go to the end a sort of boxiness and then it gives you more harder edges uh, so that the brush curve you have to think of like the side of a brush uh, that's the best way I've heard of uh, describing that anyway so yeah doing these fists uh, fairly straightforward uh, again it, you can get away with lower detail um, for a character um, and uh, you have to go much higher detail if you're closer in. I mean, that should be fairly obvious, but getting that right uh, when I was a beginner was actually quite tough. Uh, and putting loads of detail into bits that were hardly going to be seen uh, was an amateur mistake uh, that I used to do. I noticed actually with the uh, muscles of the, um, the abs, uh, the ab um, abdominal muscles, uh, that I was trying to put some asymmetry on it, but then it started looking a bit less stylized and more uh, realistic. So I thought um, in the end I would uh, uh, make them symmetrized, so it's a bit sort of sharper and stylized. Um, and at this point, I think I, I doubled the resolution, which was a bit silly. I did this this morning, uh, and I, just before college, and I was thinking I've got to uh, finish off quickly. Um, and I was sort of panicking and I just quickly upped the resolution but doubling it was a bit ludicrous because it went to uh, over two million um, polys which is quite nice because uh, you get those sharp edges uh, which looks quite nice with the style but um, it, it was making my computer lag quite a lot and it might have been a cause of some glitches as well uh, when baking uh, but I don't, it, it, there was something that went wrong, something went vastly wrong. It, I couldn't take it into instant mesh, that was, the file was too big and it just crashed. Um, instant mesh doesn't seem to be able to handle much over a million it seems. Uh, so, <laughs> fair enough really. Uh, but I suppose it is a retopology tool so you'd expect it to take high poly. Uh, but it could be down to my graphics card, computer or whatever. Uh, but yeah, so limitations there. So I had to do a normal decimate and maybe that caused problems, I don't know. Uh, eyes, uh, oh dear, I'm always struggling, I'm moaning a lot today, I've got a, um, I'm happy, I'm a happy person. <laughs> the eyes I always find very tough um, to get right uh, and today I was doing the next one which is, uh, the next one after the next one, uh, melancholy because I couldn't, yeah, don't worry, I was, I was working on a face today and uh, the eyeballs and getting the right size was just so difficult for some reason. Uh, I really have a lot to learn um, about facial anatomy. Uh, it's funny really, uh, you'd think, uh, I've done quite a lot of facial sculpts and always the eyes, real struggle. Uh, but uh, these are stylized eyes so I can get away with a lot, um, but getting the pupils in the right place, uh, just they always looked wrong and he looked like he was uh, sort of looking uh, two different ways. And, it's tough. I suppose we look at the eyes so much. Uh, things like the eyes, the nose and the mouth we're very used to uh, looking at and if anything's wrong with them we notice instantly. And eyes are kind of symmetrical aren't they? Uh, they're because they're always looking in the same place. So if one's very slightly out you're, you're a, it's a goner. Uh, and uh, we notice that and pick that up straight away. Uh, so <clears throat> Uh, people that have uh, lazy eyes, they may only be really slightly lazy eyes, but people really pick up on that uh, and can be quite nasty, uh, but uh, we mustn't be like that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> shouldn't be judging people uh, on this uh, channel. It's a sculpting channel, but uh, get back to the topic. So smartening up that posing pouch, um, oh how I love that posing pouch. Uh, it's, it is weird when you're sculpting bits like that, you just think this is weird. And I, I know that it's going on YouTube as well, so I'm thinking this just all feels very, very strange. Uh, but uh, I suppose uh, it's part of the model, it's, uh, it's art. Uh, it's sort of, uh, if you've ever done any life drawing, uh, then you'll understand where I'm coming from. Uh, that's a, a weird experience as well. Uh, anyway, 
<laughs> let's get back to this. Uh, yeah, so um, I thought if I'm going to do eyeballs, I'm going to have to do some eyelids because it didn't make sense without them. And I think it just about worked, although it did take a few attempts to get the eyes not pointing in different directions. But you, you can see there, it, it, it looks odd, but I thought I've got to finish this. Uh, I'm spending too much time already. So I put it on a little platform and this is where I get it wrong in terms of the end gone because I put some supporting loops in but you, it's important to actually close the end gons as well otherwise you do get sort of glitches when uh, rendering. Okay sorry I experienced a crash there. Uh, my Wacom decided to do an auto update and that stopped my recording. So sorry about the jump cut there. I'm trying not to do them but sometimes I think I really ought to because uh, I'm talking rubbish. Anyway, uh, so back to this uh, and um, I was talking about N-Gons, wasn't I? And yes, so doing the bass here. Uh, and all the, also I think my audio has jumped as well so that doesn't help. Uh, <laughs> oh dear, it's all going wrong today. Hopefully uh, this will start making sense in a minute. Uh, but there might be a bit of a gap in a second. Oh dear, never mind. <laughs> Oh, should I restart that? No, I'm just going to carry on. I'm just going to carry on, regardless. If you're still with me, sorry. Sorry about my um, computer crashes and all sorts. Anyway, uh, so I'm linking up. Uh, hopefully you can see what I'm seeing on the screen. This is where my Eevee problems all started. Uh, setting up, and I've done the bake, so I didn't record the bake because that's kind of pointless. And in a minute, there we go, it goes white. And uh, I, I can't get it to stop going white in Eevee. Uh, so I just gave up and it went back to cycles and there's the final piece. Uh, I am pleased with it I thought it's uh, good fun uh, nice to do sort of pose stylized character and uh, in, Enjoyed this sculpt uh, not so much enjoying the video recording experience Hopefully I'll be better next time when I'm less frazzled after a day at work uh, Okay, so discord server uh, do get along to discord server. You can uh, join in sculpt January there uh, obviously you can join there on the Facebook as well, but if you want your stuff on the YouTube channel you can uh, post it on the Discord server. Uh, some great stuff, really great stuff, really impressed. It just looks fantastic. I like that one, empty, empty wallet with moths flying out of it, That's, that was a good one. Nice staff there, uh, empty, empty your mind, uh, sort of Buddha uh, thing going on there. Uh, the, the staff, uh, that was a nice one. Uh, good base, uh, and then they ran out of time I think. Uh, empty again, nice one there. And that looks a good one, doesn't it? Uh, from Double Tap again. That's fantastic work. Really enjoyed that one. Uh, staff, uh, looking good. Uh, brilliant stuff. I'm going fairly quickly here um, because uh, I don't know if people are even watching at this point. <laughs> so I'm sort of thinking uh, I need to go quickly. Illyrium, well done for not doing a really sexualized uh, sculpt. Well done, you. <laughs> it's a nice one. I like this cookie one. Uh, that was a clever one. Uh, nice, nice idea with the sculpture that was empty, missing the body sort of thing. Another good staff there. Uh, Evie's lovely for glowing things. It's, it's perfect, isn't it? When it's working. Uh, nice one there as well. This one's an interesting one. Sort of, I'm assuming that's the sort of empty uh, one as well. Flex, so we're, they were on to some of today's. That was a good one. And the dinosaur there. And flexing some sort of stretchy thing there. I love the, the squirrel's expression, trying to get into the nut. Flexing, I'm assuming, there as well. Uh, clever and uh, flexing arm very nice I think uh, I did go back through a few favorites uh, the cookie I thought a great idea empty cookie jar and with the sculpt on the front to make it a sculpt double tap brilliant uh, really like that one and I uh, did like the Buddha as well uh, yeah there was uh, and the wallet yep <laughs> uh, so many uh, so really well done and uh, thanks for watching if you're still with me and I'll see you next time <laughs>